Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on creating a solid foundation for identity access management modernization with federated identity. My name is Kim Locke. I'm with Radiant Logic, and I'll be your moderator for today's program. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that your lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you may enter it in the question portal, and we will have a Q&A session at the end, if time allows. If we are not able to get to your question during the webcast, we'll send a personal email to follow up. Also, this webcast will be recorded and sent out, along with a copy of the presentation slides within the next 24 hours. Our speaker today is Wade Ellery, Senior Solutions Architect at Radiant Logic. Wade has extensive experience in enterprise IT direct and channel software and services sales and management. He has in-depth knowledge and experience in enterprise IAM, IGA, risk and compliance, and IT security challenges. Over to you, Wade. Well, thank you very much, and good morning, everyone. And welcome to the second webinar of 2020. I don't know if anybody writes personal checks anymore. I'm still getting in the habit of putting 2020 on my dates. But we are already in the uh, second decade of the 20th century, 21st century, I guess. And we want to really talk about the uh, topics we started with our last webinar, which is what to expect in the next five years and how to plan for the evolution of identity and the concepts that were outlined by Gary Rowe. If you haven't uh, seen the recording or able to attend the webinar we did two weeks ago with Gary Rowe's The Future of Identity, uh, 2020 to 2025, definitely uh, contact us. We'll get you links to see that. You can get it off of our website. But it is an excellent foundation for what we're going to be doing for the next few webinars, which is now building on that conversation of given you've got this roadmap, this set of challenges, this dynamic world that you've been dropped into, and in the next five years is going to be a heck of a roller coaster ride. Who do you bring with you and how do you insulate yourself from change? How do you future-proof your decisions? How do you build yourself a foundation that gives you the tools you need and the flexibility to handle the challenges of modern identity management, access management, governance and administration? And I will postulate today that that is Radiant Logic, and we'll talk really in detail about how Radiant Logic will give you those solutions and those tools and be able to enable you to grab the tiger by the tail, have the ride of your life, come out a hero, and solve some major challenges in a way that gives you the benefits that were always promised in the identity space, but not always able to deliver. So just taking an overall look at modern identity access management and, and identity governance and administration, and those are sort of the two halves of the top of the triangle or the two uh, thirds of the circle that is rounded out by Radiant Logic. Um, we're moving into a model now where people are, are using the latest access management protocols. Almost every organization we talk to is now converting their application environment into an OAuth, OpenID Connect, SAML-based claims federation, smart authorization model now. So the ability to integrate applications sort of independent of the, uh, the back-end systems. And this is really driven by a move to the cloud. SaaS applications, by definition, should have been using those, and many are. Many SaaS applications are yet to catch up with that, but it is the technology that we're all sort of riding now into the future. And at the same time, we're integrating automated access and governance controls. We're, we're pulling in all the identity information. We're running policies and analysis and entitlement reports and doing attestation and review and policy enforcement and segregation of duties we're applying all this control to the authentication and authorization model so we can minimize the risk to our environments. We can speed the user in, in integration into the environment. We can give the customer a more seamless experience by aggregating and, and provisioning all the information they need in order to make their decisions and do this through a series of workflows and automated tasks instead of the faxes around the office with administrators piling them up on their desk and trying to get to them on Friday before they go home. But at the same time we're doing all of this, we're basically moving from our on-premise five bedroom, two bath house that our kids were raised in with the big backyard that we had to mow every weekend. And we're now downsizing ourselves into a condo where there's a homeowners association that's going to take care of everything for us. We just have to show up and enjoy ourselves, cook inside our own house, 
And every once in a while, visit that storage facility we piled all of our old furniture into to pull out something we forgot we needed. This is my metaphor for us moving into a hybrid world. When we're moving from on-premise data centers where we own the servers, we own the operating system patching, we own the applications now into a cloud-based world where we're handing over a lot of our information to third parties, asking them to manage it for us for a fee, and then we're accessing that as we need it to do our jobs, but we're not as responsible for the underpinning of all that information for the day-to-day -day maintenance and control. Tremendous shift in budget and expenses and overhead with the idea that we're going to focus on the real business side of the model, the application integration, the, the revenue generation side. But again, anytime you look at moving, if you can imagine what that's like, it's massively disruptive and you obviously end up in your new location without everything you thought you needed. I, I used to work long years, decades ago in real estate and we would tell people when they were moving, take your TV remote controls and put them in your purse or put them in your car because the people who pack your house will put them inside a cookie jar that you won't open for three years and you'll never find them. So there's things you're gonna leave behind, there's things you're gonna miss, there's things you're gonna have to be able to integrate into that hybrid world. So to do this, you want to first go through and really clean up your existing environment. You want to take a look at what you have before you move. You want to take a look at what you have before you modernize. You want to take a look at what you have and see how that is going to feed into your new infrastructure. And the key fuel for that infrastructure, the key thing you're feeding in is identity. Identity information is the blood that flows throughout your, your uh, infrastructure, throughout your IT organization. It's the customer identity, it's the employee identity, it's the contractor identity, it's all the information, the students, the doctors, the everyone that you work with has an identity and that identity is key to them being able to get access to information. But traditionally this identity information has been scattered everywhere. It's been distributed in multiple systems and not in the same format, not in the same structure, not with the same schema, not the same set of attribute values and labels, not in a way that you can easily put it all into one big basket and have it all interact as one single set of data. It needs to be correlated. It needs to be normalized. It needs to be transformed so that Something as simple as F name in one system and given name in another system and first name in a third system all appear to be the same value when you deliver that to an application. And it gets it in the preferred label that it wants, but at the same time, another application gets it the same information with a different label that it needs. If you're sending a claim or an OAuth scope or whatever that might be, you've got to tailor this information to that need. and that. Aggregation, correlation, normalization, and cleanup is critical. Now, why is this becoming such a overwhelming challenge now? And I don't know if you, you're living with the feeling that there's times in, where I, I wake up and I just feel like there's too many moving parts in my day. I've got too many demands that are happening simultaneously. I don't know where to start and I'm paralyzed by the challenges of all the things that I have to face. And that really is where we are in the IT industry right now. We're moving to the cloud. We have a whole new set of applications to integrate with a whole new protocol set that require a different access management solution. I now have customers and employees and contractors and partners that I'm responsible for. And oh, by the way, my simplified desktop world that I scrubbed and locked down every night is now a mobile device outside the perimeter of my environment coming in with a whole bunch of registered information I have to verify before I let somebody have access. So I've got to now authenticate on two layers. Where are you coming from and what are you on? And who are you and what can you do? It really gives you that sense of overwhelm. Well, we want to help you survive the overwhelm. And like the old parable goes, how do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite at a time. And to understand how to slice that elephant up into individual bites, you first have to get your arms around, where is the elephant? Is it a, is it a brush if you just pull on the tail? Is it like a tree if you grab the leg? Is it more like an octopus if you handle the, the trunk? It, an elephant can seem to be completely different things to different people. And this IT infrastructure is you aggregate everything together as you pull in information from databases and directories and 
pull down information from cloud applications that you provision into, you've got that elephant sense of nothing seems to be the same, nothing seems to fit, but it is part of a whole. And this great migration to the cloud now, the idea is, well, the cloud is a wonderful safe place where nothing bad ever happens, nothing goes down, everything works beautifully, we're all on new protocols, it's rainbows and unicorns, but in reality, all those challenges we had down there in the ocean, all the islands and, and reefs and, and barriers and weather and icebergs that we dealt with across protocol incompatibility and formatting differences and schemas and dormant accounts and, and un, unregistered uh, licenses, all that information, all those challenges are going with us into the cloud. Those same constructs, those same issues are there. The opportunity you have now though is before you make that transition, at least discover what you have, normalize the data, get it into a managed set, verify the quality of the data, fill in the missing information, be able to build a comprehensive view of your identity across all of your sources into a unified set, and then be able to bring that with you to the cloud. This is the idea of Again, moving from your five-bedroom house to your two-bedroom condo, you're going to get rid of a lot of stuff. You're going to clean out the garage. You're going to throw away those things you thought you didn't need anymore, but you really hung on to for no good reason. You're going to look at what you really value and want to take with you. And then you're going to go buy some new stuff for the new house because it's a new opportunity, so you're going to add to what you have. This is what Radiant Logic gives you, is the visibility and the capability of going through and cleaning house, of verifying what's quality, integrating new information in the system and getting you ready so when you move into your new home, every room has what it needs, everything you needed came along, everything you could get rid of that didn't give you bliss, as they say in the cleanup business, is left behind, and you're able to move forward. That, again, is the, the promise of Radiant Logic. We'll talk today about where that takes place, how that happens, and what we can do to assist in that situation. So you're pretty familiar with this concept if you've seen any of our webinars before. Radiant Logic was built to handle a problem that's been around since the beginning of identity. Old systems, in fact, I was talking to a bank the other day on their customer side, and still today, many of the applications they have to integrate for their customer experience are black box applications that don't even have an interface for importing a CSV file of users or exporting data. It's type on their interface on the keyboard to create users in the system very complex and difficult to interact with. So Radiant Logic was here to be able to allow you to integrate information together. And we started in the industry integrating access. Even now, as we move to the cloud, we're integrating, we're federating access. We're going into Azure, we're going into Okta, we're going into Ping, Federate, and other products, and we're, we're centralizing access to our application. So the user has one place to go to get everything they need to authenticate and authorize and access applications for their work. But the dirty little secret is the back office, the stuff behind the scenes, everything that makes that work is still in the mess. It's still different protocols and structures. It's application information that's not integrated with domain information that is not augmented with security data on my databases. All the things those applications need are not necessarily easily available. And this is where Radiant Logic comes into play. Now, I've talked a lot about aggregation and correlation and cleanup and, and data normalization. What I'm going to focus on right now is just the concepts of aggregation and correlation. The ability to understand that a user exists in many places with many different identifiers that may not easily map together. So there's really powerful logic tools inside Radiant Logic's blue sphere there that lets you connect to all those systems. Now, there's a whole conversation in the industry about, well, you know, everybody's got connectors. Connecting is the booby prize. It's not the point. Disconnecting isn't enough. The ability to connect to the information, extract the data in a way that is useful, that is complete, that understands the structure and the schema and the relationships in that data. If you've got databases with multiple join tables and relationships from managers to direct reports and customers to products, that information needs to be retained in a hierarchical model. It needs to be understood. If you just convert it all into flat files, you lose half the value of that data. So it's not just connecting, it's extracting that information, but it's extracting it in a platform agnostic 
standards-based model. We'll talk to anybody that talks a standard protocol. So we can bring that information forward into the Radiant Logic sandbox. So now that I've connected and extracted that information, I can now start to operate on that. I can transform, translate, correlate information together, same user on multiple platforms with different identifiers can appear as one unified record. Same identifier, different person can be disambiguated, so I don't end up putting a junior accountant and the CFO on the same profile and giving the wrong person access to the wrong information. I can build that information and then create views of that data that can be shared with my access management system that can be used for authentication authorization. Now, as I look at products that are taking identities into the cloud for Azure and Okta, they're primarily focused on your AD environment. Microsoft, for sure, because Azure is an AD Microsoft product. It's actually called Azure AD. Its focus is on everybody should be an AD, and if everyone's an AD, we're going to go to Azure, and everything's fine. Bob's your uncle. But we're, we'll see a little bit later, there are challenges in the whole space of governance and granular access and zero trust that are going to require a lot more information and a lot richer profile than just what's available in AD. And same thing with the Okta world. The original model there was, uh, was getting information into Okta as quickly as possible. AD is where everything was. And like all applications, the assumption was everything I need is in one place just the way I want it. But that's really not the way the world works unless you've implemented Radiant Logic. Then for every application, everything you need is exactly where you need it to be in Radiant and exactly the format, the structure, the schema, and the subset of users that you need for that particular purpose. But the magic, the other half of the magic besides aggregation is we can provide that view of the data simultaneously in multiple different sets, different schemas, different protocols, it can be LDAP for one application. It can be a SQL call to a table for a reporting tool. It can be a REST call from a mobile device. All that can talk to the same data set. And these are mouse click configuration choices here. So <clears throat> the value of the IDAS platform, getting all my identities up into an Azure or an Okta cloud-based model is that I've, I've got my identities outside my data center. So if I'm registering parents for student access to, to um, grades and reporting and, and, and school information, having them in the cloud when my applications are in the cloud, and all that kind of makes sense. Keep everybody near the data that they're in. Customers are coming in externally, maybe putting them up there makes sense if I haven't already provisioned them into multiple on-premise platforms and built that model. So you have some advantages of putting the data up in the cloud and getting it closer to your cloud applications. But there's some limitations. You've got information now in this directory that have a specific purpose, which is to serve the authentication and authorization needs of that particular cloud vendor and the applications they're integrated with. It's not available for other things. You can't run governance against data stored in Azure. It's not, it doesn't have the tools for that. You can't run local LDAP authentication against an IDAS solution because it's using protocols that don't understand that local on-premise LDAP authentication that you're legacy applications are still using or that many of your applications will be using. <clears throat> and the rest of your existing identity infrastructure doesn't necessarily benefit from those identities in the cloud because they're looking outward. They're faced at looking east and your internal applications are looking west and they won't even see each other particularly. So you need an, a layer to integrate those together to be able to bring that data. So with Radiant Logic, all the investment you've made to get your information into Okta, into Azure, into that cloud-hosted directory platform can be leveraged by Radiant because we can virtualize that data as a source just like we virtualized your AD, like we virtualized information coming out of HR, like we inf virtualized information from your security database, all the sources of identity data on-premise or in the cloud, whether it's IDs inside Salesforce with Salesforce profiles you want to incorporate, it's Okta information, it's Azure information. We can bring that information into the global profile. So not only can you then route authentication and authorization up to the profile and credentials in Okta for on-premise applications, but I can also audit that global profile now with my governance and administration tools so I can see where my Okta accounts are enabled and my local AD accounts are disabled and my HR system says you're terminated, all that now is information at my fingertips that because Radiant Logic 
correlates the information, builds that global probable profile, fully indexes all the attributes at scale and performance of a directory, so answers are instantaneous, I can run queries against that data and find my anomalies, find the information I need, verify that information, feed it into my governance tool, do my rich uh, attestation and recertification processes, and still make that information available for authentication authorization for my on-premise web access management applications. Also, I will say that there's something coming. There's another tectonic plate shift coming to the identity space. You can you can you can pay a dollar and go to Vegas and bet on change in the identity space. Now, what is it going to be? Is it going to be as complete a shift as the cloud migration has been for us? Is it going to be a more minor transformation? Is somebody to come out and come out with something um, on a, on a FIDO three zero trust zero password Microsoft Hello integration layer that's going to transform things? I don't necessarily know, but I know something's coming. It may be the fact that we're going to actually one day in the near my career lifetime get to customer brings his own identity. That you don't have identity stores anymore. You've got information linked to a customer profile that is on time generated authentication and authorization, and things are done dynamically based on information that's shared by the customer in the interaction they're with you on an interaction by interaction basis and you re-authenticate and, re and recertify each transaction. Who knows? But I know something's coming. You need to future-proof your environment. You don't want to script solutions. You don't want to hard code one-off uh, situations that solve a problem today and then end up being a burden later. I, I can't tell you how many customers we talk to say, yeah, we, we built this product 10 years ago um, it's all hand coded. It was all done by a guy who's long gone. Nobody wants to touch it. And it is a stranglehold on our ability to innovate and our ability to respond. And we have applications that aren't integrated. We have projects that are canceled. We have things that are out of budget because this thing is such a bear to work on and no one wants to touch it that we're stuck. You can't be stuck in this market. You can't be in a scenario where you don't have the flexibility to move and move quickly, move laterally and move vertically. You have to be able to be agile in this model because the industry is changing. Your competitors are adjusting. People are, are optimizing now to the newest opportunities. If you're not at the same time, you're going to fall behind. And in today's market, falling behind can have such a dramatic impact to ROI, to revenue, to competitiveness that you can literally watch your market evaporate as someone else eats your lunch if you're not innovating. Just take Okta as an example. That's a company that, I don't know, started seven years ago maybe, and now they're a major player in the cloud identity space access management integrated into major corporations. They are a product that came from a wonderful concept and a tremendous business model to owning a market space. So if you're competing in any model against a company that can move that agilely, that can bring that kind of resources to bear, that can innovate your market space, you've got to be able to compete at the speed of today's market. And that's where Radiant Logic comes into play. The ability of pulling your information together, abstracting it from the sources, decoupling you from the legacy environments that you have, being able to support new protocols, new structures, new schemas, new standards out of the box and be able to make that information available ubiquitously, whether it's on-premise, in the cloud, legacy platforms, new innovative platforms, that ability to, to scramble and, and change is what the Radiant Logic capability gives you. So in doing that, by implementing Radiant, you've future-proof yourself from challenges that you haven't even identified yet that are coming down the road because when they do arrive, you're ready, you're able to jump right onto them. And one of the things that has come down the road, and it's been on, it's been on the horizon for quite a while, has been a major generator in the identity uh, space in terms of projects and, and budget, and is now even more so probably along with the move to Workday for HR in the cloud, the implementation of a new governance, identity governance and, and, author, and authentication, excuse me, 
administration tool, an IGA solution. That is one of the number one conversations we have with customers we talk to. We're rolling out a new IGA solution. We're ripping out the old one. We're putting in a new, uh, net, this generation version, and we need to be able to make that available, uh, and we need to be able to integrate that with our environment. So getting towards that model of, a, of an identity governance and administration requires identity information that's what feeds it that's the gasoline for that engine and the quality of that data the the breadth and ubiquitous available availability of that data to your governance solution has a direct impact on the value of that governance product if you're only managing and monitoring three systems because that was all you could connect to and sort out because the rest is such an absolute mess that you can't even touch it then you're only getting very little of the potential value for that investment, even after all the information, all the money, all the investment has been made, you've limited the scope. And unfortunately, in the identity space, a lot of projects that we worked on started out with grand plans to, to deliver everything. And because of complexity and difficulty in integration and budget, they end up narrowing the scope down over and over and over until they get to something small they can deliver and then the project kind of grinds to a halt, loses its momentum, the sponsor moves on, and your grand plan this time to finally get my identity governance solution across all my platforms dies because the challenge of that integration at the bottom is so hard. It's, a, it's an albatross around the product. It's not a fault of the governance solutions. They are focused on doing entitlement discovery and profile management and uh, governance and attestation, segregation of duties, policy enforcement, and provisioning, all those things that they're built for, they do really well. Cleaning up the mess in your garage is not what they're built for. That's what Radiant Logic is built for. And that's why coupling the two together gives you all the benefits of that full picture you created of what governance could do if I could see everything, if I could access everything, if everything was normalized and cleaned up and easy to integrate. How broadly could I implement this governance solution in my environment? With Radiant Logic, that's what we're providing. And if you look at this particular diagram here, it can be a incremental process of building that profile for the user from multiple different sources and building that for purpose for particular endpoints, but then continuing to flow that data up. So we have many solutions where we've layered in Radiant Logic to build up that full global profile. And then on the top half there, the, the secret sauce, the other half of the payoff, the, the free trip to Hawaii, which is I can now take this information, I can take the result of all this aggregation, correlation, normalization work that I've done with Radiant Logic, which by the way is done with a mouse. It's very little of that needs to be any kind of coding. This is a mature product we built for 20 years now that is able to do this with wizards and tools that make this fingertip available, we can then present that information simultaneously to different sources or different consumers of the identity data in different models. It can be a business structure view for an M&A process. It can be a graphical view for my worldwide sales organization. It can be an organizational view for my HR and, and reporting system uh, platform. All those get the information in exactly the format, the schema, and the structure that they need it. And I can generate those views dynamically, make them available to speed of a directory, even though the logic behind that, the engineering and, and building those views, correlating that information, transforming that information, putting it into a different protocol, that's heavy lifting. That's not something you're going to do on your own. That's not something you're going to script. If you try and script the concept of building a union, where I'm taking five sources of identity information and I'm building one flat list so each user is represented a single time no matter how many times they exist across multiple platforms and nobody exists, not everyone exists in one single platform, that is a massive calculation that has to be done by a very intelligent, very mature platform, which Radiant Logic is. If you try and build that from scratch, uh, it's <laughs> again, we've been at this for decades. It's not something you're going to do. Uh, to solve a problem in the short term. You're going to do something very simple. It's going to be brittle. And when things change or someone comes back and says, oh, by the way, I need three more attributes from this database over here, you're going to say, great, bring me a developer, half a million dollars, and give me six months. With Radiant Logic, it literally is half an hour 
a couple mouse clicks and I've got you what you need. And we have customer after customer who stood up for us at conferences and said just that, that the game changer that Radiant Logic was for identity integration was phenomenal, that they were able to do in weeks what used to take months or never got done. And they've gone from bottleneck to business enabler. And that's the key here. If you think about it, identity is a, uh, a river. And if you dam that river, if you can't get the identity flowing everywhere it needs to go, then everything downstream starves, everything downstream dies. And projects will fail if they can't get the identity information they need. And from a security standpoint, an auditing and compliance standpoint, you can't just throw everything at everybody. That overwhelms the application development team. It exposes data that shouldn't get out. It makes for a very insecure environment, and then it makes for, for a high threat threshold against that. So you need to be able to manage this data effectively, but deliver it at the speed of a directory, and that's what Radiant can do for you. And it's a combination of two things. It's that join engine there, that blue sphere of magic. And like Einstein said, I believe, uh, anything that's sufficiently technologically advanced is indistinguishable from magic. So when I look at Radiant and what it does, it basically, in some levels for me, it's still magic. This stuff is amazing. And then there's the shared view normalization, the persisted view, that golden pyramid is our highly optimized big data store that lets you take the result of all that join engine work and store it on disk. You don't want to store it in memory because memory is too small. You're talking about large sets of users. You're talking about complex relationships. We store it on disk so it's available at the speed of a directory. And then we listen on those back ends for changes. The other challenge with memory is that memory gets stale immediately. The minute you've, you've cached everything into memory, you start to lose the accuracy of that data as backend information changes. And in large complex environments, that backend is constantly changing. So we listen on those backends in real time for updates and changes if the system supports real time change notification or periodically if we need to query something and then we apply those updates immediately to the stored information so when an application asks for who is John Smith who what groups does he have access to who's his manager all this information is accurate at the moment that that query is made and that data is available and it's provided at the speed of a directory this isn't a batch MDM solution where I run my report overnight and I come in the next morning and I open up my email and I've got a link to all my data in a big dump. This is information that's actionable today. We are in the authentication authorization flow. We are highly available. We are highly productive. We are, a, we are in the middle of the mix and we deliver for application authentication authorization. But at the same time, we're also taking all that aggregation, all that normalization, all that information and providing it to the IGA solutions, the sale points, the savings. They need that data too, and they need that data as organized, as common identifier labeled, so that every system has one unique identifier for that user that identifies his record so SailPoint doesn't have to try and redo the work that Radiant Logic does. And that information is clean, normalized, rich, and available so that SailPoint can do what it does best. It can analyze that information. It can build entitlement catalogs. It can build that three-dimensional cube. It can set up segregation of duties. It can enforce policies that says everyone in California, capital C, capital A, is subject to this uh, privacy requirement. Now, if your data on the back end has C-A-L-I-F period, C-A-L, C-A with a capital and a lowercase, your little filter inside SailPoint isn't going to work. And you're going to build a very complex model to handle all those variations. And last, Radiant has already normalized that data, has already made every account that has a California location, capital C, capital A. And that, that flows across all the systems there unnesting groups so things are flattened out so you have a full list of users in the group so that SailPoint can much more easily analyze that data. Being able to fill in and discover who doesn't have a manager because if you're doing recertification reports and you don't have a manager then there's no one getting the email saying review your access so you're basically flying under the radar unmanaged in an environment that's supposed to be delivering complete solutions. Again not the fault of the IGA solution it's the quality of the data. If you make the data high quality, you'll get from that the value you're looking for. 
And then on top of that, we can then take the information that SailPoint has built that all the work that SailPoint's done to build that rich, full, three-dimensional cube and relationships, entitlements and accounts and, and verified data and policy enforced pieces, and we can bring that back into Radiant Logic, combine that valuable identity data that's been enhanced by SailPoint with backends for authentication and, and authorization, and then make that full, rich profile available to cloud applications, legacy applications on-premise for authentication and authorization. The information in SailPoint is for governance, it's for cleanup, it's for provisioning. It's not for querying SailPoint to say, hey, is Wade's credential accurate? And by the way, what groups does Wade have access to? That's not a question SailPoint's designed to answer. That's one that Radiant Logic is designed to answer. But let's answer it with the richest set of data we can create from all the sources, SailPoint and the others, because we can now link back to credential sources and also validate passwords, validate certificates, validate that user identity. Now at the same time, we're also racing up to the cloud. So we're doing governance, we're making sure our information is clean, we're building this golden image, and then we need to push some of that data into the cloud because cloud applications require local installs of user information, not just in Azure AD, but Salesforce has a user account for you. Box has a user account for you. You're up in Amazon accessing servers and, and platforms. You've got an account in there. You've got applications running in Amazon. They're looking for an identity in Amazon to authenticate and authorize you for. You're building these islands, unfortunately, of identity information now at every cloud vendor you interact with. So two things are happening there. One, I need to be able to decide what information I'm going to share with that cloud vendor, how I'm going to push that information in, how I'm going to provision that account with just the right information I need. For that, you need a federation layer. You need Radiant Logic to build that golden image and tailor that to each of your cloud applications. This is again where schema can be very different. You can have one cloud application whose API or, or provisioning a uh, skim is looking for F name, another one looking for full name, another one looking for given name. So you need to be able to map that information to the specific endpoints in something as fast and easy and as, as flexible as Radiant Logic. So you don't stand up a different platform for each cloud synchronization tool. You use Radiant and different views to do that. And then at the same time, you need to pull that cloud information back down and make that part of your global profile so that that information is available to use for SailPoint and Savion for governance and compliance. Your license management tool needs to know where your licensed active accounts are is sitting in all those applications. You can imagine the hundreds of thousands of dollars in subscription costs that are potentially lost because people have left the organization. They haven't been deprovisioned from all the endpoints. You get a, a bill every month from your cloud vendor that says, you know, you have 14,282 accounts and your total cost this month is X and you just pay it because the thought of auditing to see if it's 14,282 or should it be 13,126, no one's gonna do that unless you have a tool like Radiant Logic that automatically pulls that information in, adds it in, lets governance tools like Savion and, and SailPoint manage that information, align that with policies, enforce that data find those anomalies, save that money. You're talking about something that pays for itself in this scenario. So this is the combination of a Radiant Logic's federated identity solution and ICS, the ability to push data out to endpoints, to provision those endpoints, to make them available for authentication and authorization. So where does Radiant Logic sit in this whole mix? How do we do this and solve all these problems? And if you Look at this model now. This has been an, an evolving model. Originally, this, this was generated by Gartner. There were four pillars of identity management. Access management, identity governance, identity administration, which is a whole separate set of tools, and then the directory services, the, the data stores for identity. But what we realized with our customers was that in reality, this is a, a foundational pillar model that the, the pillars of access management, governance, and administration sit on top of the foundation of identity. They all consume the same identity data. They're not parallel running independently. There's a dependency here of the top on the bottom because all those sources of identity at the bottom there need to be ubiquitously available to these tools on the top layer, on these top columns. And what we've seen 
over the last three to five years is a massive consolidation. The administration tools, the user provisioning, workflow, delegated administration, all those functions of creating accounts on endpoint systems, that has been absorbed into the identity governance and administration tools, administering those data, that, those identities, and coupled with the tools for data aggregation, um, rich profile integration, governance, attestation, policy enforcement, all those functions within the identity governance side, access certification, have been merged together. So really you have two columns here of functionality. You've got all the products on the left there that you're familiar with, including the, the cloud vendors, Azure, Okta, Ping, CA, single sign-on, still around, all the tools, uh, Forge Rocks, that do access management, that let a user authenticate to an application or an, a portal and get access to multiple applications if it's rolled out properly. And then on the other side, you have the governance solutions, which has really kind of come down to the legacy stack vendor products, which are being switched out in wholesale right now for the Saviant and the SailPoint solutions at this point in time. Um, there are others out there, but that's, again, it's the Coke and Pepsi of the beverage world um, that really covers so much of the market. But sitting on top of that, uniquely positioned, the only product that really fills this gap is Radiant Logic to do all the aggregation, meta directory, virtual directory, synchronization, replication, transformation, mapping, cleanup that needs to be done for this information from all these identity sources on premise in the cloud across platforms to be available for those solutions. So we're feeding that information in together, in together into Radiant Logic and then making it available for both the access management and the IGA platforms and all the endpoint applications because these operate on both. Access management is giving you access management to all the applications you have an account provisioned into that you have access to that you have uh, ability to operate. At the same time, your IGA solution is managing and monitoring your accounts on those systems, enforcing policy, segregating duties, provisioning endpoints. So all those sit as a triangular model. If you look at that little graphic in the middle there, it's a triangle. Here with a, a stool with three legs, it stands very strong, it stands very level, it doesn't wobble like the table at the restaurant, but if you take one of the legs off, it falls over immediately. You can't balance on two out of three legs. You need all three of these pieces for a fully functioning identity infrastructure. You need access management, you need governance, you need identity federation at Radiant Logic level to make all this work. And in another visual here, it's a complete circle. If you take any piece of this out of the circle, it doesn't, data doesn't flow, things don't work, users don't get done. So there's a correlation of function here, and it really is a massively complementary platform. Access management does things that governance doesn't do. Governance does things that access management doesn't do. Radiant Logic's identity correlation, normalization, cleanup, and Multiple view infrastructure does things that neither the governance nor the access management solution can do. And together, you've got a complete solution. We're seeing more and more customers now who have tried to go it alone with a single solution, realizing, wait a minute, this is too hard. I'm running into too many roadblocks. My identity data is too convoluted. I'm, I'm spending all my budget and all my time handling anomalies and one-offs and messes I'm not even getting to the, 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 the sweet center of my governance project of, of segregation of duties and recertification and access controls. I need to bring in identity management federation from Radiant Logic to be able to clean up that data, jumpstart my project, get my information in the system and get it rolling. Um, and that's again, critical for both of these platforms, both of these solutions. So regardless of where you're going in the cloud, regardless of the endpoint you're looking at, you're going to need to be able to push data up there. You're going to want to control what that data looks like. You're going to want to control the scope of your OAuth claims. You're going to want to control the format of your data. You're going to want to do that work in Radiant Logic first. And then from all the governance and access controls and provisioning pieces, again, having that centralized information, whether it's on-premise or cloud data integrated together is critical to this delivery of this unified system. So what is Radiant Logic doing on the inside? What is under the covers? What's that technology that's indistinguishable from magic? 
Well, it is a very rich and strong and powerful platform that starts out with virtualization, the ability to connect to backend systems and pull data forward without asking your data owners to do anything different other than grant us a read write to their system. We don't ask them to change what they're doing. We'll take care of all the change at our level. We'll insulate them from change. If you want to normalize everything in the state location and do capital letters, but you've got a legacy platform that's expecting spelled out state names, that's fine. We can normalize it for some functions and leave it spelled out for others without changing those backend platforms. And then we're going to aggregate that information together. We're going to bring it together and join that information. We're going to do correlation across those identities. And these are critical concepts that are not easily performed and not performed without a tremendous amount of professional services, cost and exposure and time and brittleness if you're not using Radiant Logic as the tool to do that correlation, to understand the same user exists in multiple places, but the same identifier is not necessarily the same user. And then enriching that profile, integrating more sources of identity, more data from more disparate platforms with different schemas and structures so that information builds out that rich profile. If you're looking at zero trust, you're looking at continuous authorization, you're looking at attribute-based access control, you have to have that massively rich, complete user profile. Otherwise, you're doing risk analysis on three attributes, your user ID, your department, and your division. That's not going to give you a lot of granularity of authorization. That's not going to give you a zero trust model. You have to have that rich set of data. Available today, all your applications that understand groups, Radiant Logic can dynamically generate groups based off of attributes, make those appear to be static groups so the application doesn't have to do anything different. And now you're immediately leveraging that large, rich, integrated profile for your applications that use groups for authorization. We can build roles and context. So you can have relationships that says, this cell phone customer has this primary account, but in that primary account, I've got seven devices. In these seven devices, I've got two different data plans. I've got adults and children with different accesses assigned to those systems. And I've got a billing system that's set up because I'm not only billing monthly for service charges, but I'm also leasing three devices in that set of six. All that complexity takes context. It takes relationship between all that data. This is what Radiant Logic can provide. It can take that disparate sources of information and build it into a what we call a directed graph, a web of knowledge that gives value to that data. If you talk about the idea of mass to data management, throwing all your data into a giant data lake with no relationship is of little value. It's the relationship the data has to other information that gives it value. What's the customer, what product did he buy? What kind of service account does he have? Does he have a, a credit card on file? When's the last time he asked for maintenance and support? When he called into customer service, what was the outcome of that? Do, is there cross-sell, upsell opportunities? This is all contextual information that's not available in flat systems. You need to have that ability of Radiant Logic to build that multi-dimensional model. But this is all heavy lifting, this is crunching, this is analytics, this is this is analysis, this is modeling. And to do that in real time, and I'll, I'll beat this drum probably one last time, if you remember 10, 11 years ago, when healthcare.gov was rolled out, they were trying to do real time correlation between IRS and social security databases to see if end users got a discount on their health insurance. And people were waiting half a day or longer for a response back. The spinning wheel, you thought your laptop had broken because nothing was happening. Because doing these calculations in real time at scale is impossible. You need to be able to persist these calculations on disk with Radiant Logic's HSAP store, highly available, clustered technology, very performant, be able to do millions and millions of transactions simultaneously so that we can provide that information to the end sources at the speed of a directory, at the speed of business. And then again, across any of the protocols, any of the schemas, structures, formats, any way the data needs to be seen, transferring data from an LDAP in interface to a REST interface is just changing the port. All you do is change the port and, and point to the same view, and now you have a REST JSON response to a query that on the other port was giving you an LDAP response to a query. It is phenomenally simple and easy to implement. And it's that combination now Yay, it aligned, um, of the logic layer, the integration layer, and the storage layer. If you only have one, 
you've got half the solution. You're not going to have the ability to perform at speed and at scale and operate in a way that users are going to wait for the information if all you have is an integration layer. If you're simply a virtual directory, you're not going to be able to deliver. And those products went by the wayside. If you're just a big LDAP directory, if you're just a big meta directory with one big set of data all sitting there in one structure, one schema, one protocol, you're going to go the way of the dinosaurs. The meta directory didn't work because one size doesn't fit all. Every size needs to be accommodated. It's like having a shoe store and saying, we only do nine and a half. That's the only shoe we have. Well, there's a bunch of nine and a halfs out there, but you're missing 95% of the market. With identity data, if you've got one structure, one schema, one data set in one directory, you're missing 95% of the market needs that information. So you've got to be able to provide that information in a model that it provides multiple views at the speed of a directory. It's the best of both worlds you're looking for. And then scale that, highly available. We're in the authentication authorization flow. We are mom. We can't get sick. I'm sorry some of these jokes are getting old. You've heard of but it's a true metaphor in that when something happens on the network, when there's a loss of access to applications, when authentications or authorizations fail, more than likely Radiant Logic knows about it. We may not and most often are not the source of the failure, but because we're in the middle, because we're, we're the traffic model for that, we're pulling that information together. We are the canary in the coal mine. We're going to tell you very quickly. We're going to be the endpoint that's going to going to alert you that there's information not being authenticated and authorized as calls aren't being made back and re aren't responsive. But to do that, to be not the bottleneck and to not be the, ch the challenge in authentication authorization, we have to be highly available. We have to be highly scalable. We deployed in a multi-cluster, multi-node cluster model now that allows full server loss, rebuild if you're familiar with RAID array for hard drives from years ago. You can pull a whole hard drive out of the set and the system still answers all queries because the data is replicated across the system. You can drop a new one in there and it will automatically rebuild that server. So we can manage failures dynamically within the cluster and still provide identity information seamlessly without interruption. And if you're doing upgrades and updates, we can do those in a step process so you never take the full system offline. There's a tremendous amount of resilience built into the system, not only for scalability, but for availability for fault tolerance, because again, we are in the middle of the authentication authorization flow. We're feeding your governance tool. When someone comes in from the HR system as a new hire and they're they're normalized and fed into the IGA solution. You don't want that to have a roadblock there. You don't want that system not to be available. And there are multiple components to this. The primary thing we've been talking about is the federated identity service. But anytime we're pushing identity data out to outbound systems, we're provisioning to cloud endpoints, we're provisioning to internal directories and databases, we're taking that profile information from Radiant and we're applying it as a as a user account on an endpoint, that's our ICS, our identity correlation and synchronization tool. It also has some massively powerful tools for correlating identities across multiple systems, building that union, that magic that happens inside the box comes out of the ICS functionality. And then our cloud federation service is basically the ability to bolt on not only access over LDAP and REST and XML and SQL, but access over SAML and WS Fed and OpenID Connect and OAuth to the identity data inside FID. And this isn't just data that we're storing inside FID. This is information that Radiant Logic is able to source from other places and correlate and make that information available. So if you need to access applications through Federation or OAuth or OpenID Connect, CFS provides that capability of leveraging all that data and chaining with other IDPs and creating a unified flow and view of the data. So we're almost at the top of the hour here. We're going to have a little time for questions. I just wanted to give you the takeaways here that what we're seeing now in the industry, and this seems to be across the board, is a real understanding that best of breed solutions that together provide a unified and complete platform, but each do its own component of that platform to the optimum capability is the solution that everyone is now moving towards and adopting. The idea of having a three-legged stool with one leg short, so you're always kind of leaning to one side because that product inside a stack vendor just never was up to par, it wasn't what they were focusing on, is no longer really an acceptable model. You have to have highly performant, highly capable platforms that can deliver 
you want the best of breed for each. You want the upper right hand quadrant in the in the gardener evaluation. You want the tool that's not going to leave you stuck waiting for some functionality that's missing or likely never to come. So what you look for is the best of breed for access management that works for your topology, your model, your preference in vendor, the best of breed for governance that works for your, your preference in, in topology, deployment, vendor again, and then you put that third leg on the stool with Radiant Logic Federated Identity Service, the only solution out there in that space that provides that correlation, that ability to build that complete solution. And to do this without massive coding and customization and the building of brittle in-house solutions that nobody wants to own, nobody wants to touch, and it becomes such an albatross around innovation and, and transformation that you you lock yourself into a a point in time and you can't easily move past that. So you want to be able to get to continuance governments, accelerating the path of compliance operations. You want to be able to build a platform that is future-proofed and capable and can scale on the enterprise layer that can actually handle tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, tens of millions and hundreds of millions of objects. Because when we start talking about the customer side of the world, that's a massive model. The scale is is uh, magnitudes bigger than you're looking at for the internal side. And that's the world we're moving into now. Identity is not just your, your contractors and your employees. It's now your customers. It's your partners. It's all these functions out in the world. So that concludes my presentation today. I want to thank everybody for listening to that. I'm going to now step into questions real quick, just so we can touch on those as I wrap up the top of the hour. And let me see here if I can expand this out. All right. So um, does Radiant Logic provide any free trial version of the software tool related to FID that we can stand up and use for learning or POC purposes? Uh, yes, definitely. We uh, do proof of concepts with our customers. What we like to do actually is, is work with you together to understand your use cases, to understand um, how Radiant Logic is going to have an impact in your environment and what you're looking to achieve, what challenges you're facing. If it's something that we're not designed for, if it's a, a governance, you know, a, a review attestation process, we'll recommend another solution that would do that function better. But if it's something Radiant Logic can help with, and we've been described as a Swiss army knife, there's a lot of things between a corkscrew and a and a, a tweezers and a, and a toothpick in there, you can solve a lot of problems with Radiant. So we'd like to discuss with you what your use cases are. We can set up a pre, free POC, set up the environment in your in your lab, get that all running, integrate everything, work through those use cases with you, and then, and then leave that platform with you to work on. Um, it is something where we wanna make sure you're successful. That's basically it, and we're willing to invest in that with you. So yes, you can get your hands on Radiant Logic. You can see it functioning in your environment with your data and your systems and solving your problems. Um, can FID present uh, data to customers who are looking for SAML and OIDC Connect protocols? Yes, and I, and I touched on that at the end there. Our CFS product, Cloud Federation Services, which is basically a bolt-on to FID, uh, and it can be deployed you know, in, a, in sort of a black box model where you don't necessarily even necessarily need to know it's there. We'll expose the uh, capability of setting up trusts for OpenID Connect, SAML, OWASP, um, so all those protocols are supported, and then the ability to uh, provide authentication authorization to uh, SaaS applications for applications internally that need those functions, um, and leverage the data that's in Radiant Logic. Radiant Logic can be the store, so the CFS includes an, an enrollment capability. I can create an account stored in, a, in Radiant Logic and can be combined with other data you have from other sources to enrich that account. Um, you got full management of credentials, password self-service, two-factor authentication, all the things you look at for in a federated access tools available in our, our CFS uh, product. Uh, can you speak about how a Radiant Logic solution? Let me scroll down here a little bit. Uh, can assist with user access certifications. We have to complete biannual reviews for many, many applications and see too many related audit findings. Yes, and again, this goes back, we have a, a really uh, excellent deck and we'll probably be presenting it in a webinar coming in the, in the future, but you can definitely ask um, about it. And this touches on the next question that happens to be right below this one, which is a concept that Gartner has come out with called cleanup analytics. 
What they have recognized is, and Gartner spends a lot of time talking with their customers about what's working, what's not working, what's the challenge you're facing. About 10 years ago when provisioning and role-based management was first coming into play and people were trying to do all the provisioning everybody needs on their first day of work so they can start immediately, those projects were failing dramatically because what they realized was nobody knew what people needed. You had to go in and first do a role analysis. You had to do role mining and, and role definitions before you could start provisioning roles. And you have to do that discovery and that cleanup first. What, re, what history is repeating itself, what Gardner is finding now is that IGA platforms that attempt to roll out in a native environment without any cleanup analytics, without any analytic analysis done with the intent of cleaning up the data, normalizing the information, finding the holes, who doesn't have a manager, unnesting groups, uh, properly identifying group owners and, and group descriptions, all that work to prep the data for the compliance certifications, those projects that aren't doing that pre-work are having half the return on investment and half the success that those that actually do that initial correlation cleanup data unification, data normalization. And this is where Radiant Logic comes into play. This is the out of the box, point and click, mouse driven, ready to go, pull your data together, run our analytic tools against it, find the anomalies, find the good uh, identities joining, find the quality of your data, understand how to enrich that and provide that. So when you're gonna be doing access certifications, you're doing it against quality data. Now, you're still going to need a tool like a Saviant or a SailPoint or other governance tools that have the workflows and the tools that are designed to say, okay, we're going to launch a recertification. We're going to send out to all the owners of the groups the list of people that are in their groups to verify those are accurate. We're going to send out a, a notification to all the managers. These are your direct reports, but those work because now that data is complete. Now that data is rich. Now when the owner of a group is looking at the group, he sees a description that describes what that group does, looks at that user and says, oh yeah, that makes sense. If you're asking for a group owner to look at a cryptic eight character name for a group that's a concatenated abbreviation of five different things and no idea what that group's for, how can he verify that information? So when you've got the quality data available, then those tools that handle the workflow, that, that check to see which managers have done their reviews, that remind people, that give you reports, all that functionality inside the best of breed governance tools is going to function beautifully, is going to work well, is going to be something that will give you the return you're looking on. So again, it's that triangle. You need the governance tool to do the governance kind of things, but you need quality data to feed it. Radiant and IGA together give you a, a full solution for that return. Um, the next question was about that cleanup analytics. And again, doing analytical analysis of your data with the intent of cleaning it up and the capability of actually doing that cleanup, normalizing, completing that data, highlighting anomalies, finding the issues in your data before you try and put it into your governance platform. Because you've all heard the adage, garbage in, garbage out. You throw a bunch of mess into your governance platform, you're going to get a bunch of mess out. You're going to get a, bad, a, a bunch of bad decisions based on um, information that's not accurate, or you're going to get a bunch of uh, misallocated uh, authorizations that shouldn't have been done in the first place because the uh, the guess made by the manager or the the loss of access or visibility had whole sections of the system skipped over. Last one here real quick, um, zero trust was a big buzzword last year, is hang, and it's hanging around, yes. <laughs> uh, what does Rating Logic do for zero trust and now zero passwords? And that's the new one I've just heard a couple weeks ago, zero passwords. Um, the idea that we're not gonna use passwords anymore, we're gonna move towards some Microsoft Hello biometric, uh, something you have versus something you know, that's not easily usurped. Now, what's funny to me is in every cop drama that I see now, they knock out the perpetrator, they shoot the bad guy, they take his phone, they pick up his hand, they put his thumb on the phone, and then they, they look at his contact list. So just having something physical as your authentication point may not be enough in a highly secure environment. You may want to add in a PIN or a password, something you know that if someone has shot you and you're unconscious, they can't get from you. Or if you decide not to give it to someone, they can't just put your phone in front of your face and hope your eyes don't close fast enough. So 
the idea of zero trust and zero passwords relies on more accurate, rich data to make decisions about who's authenticated and authorized than simply a user ID and a password lets you in the front door of Walmart and now you can go to any department and get anything you want and take it with you. The challenge is now we need to limit what people do once they're inside applications. We need to re-authenticate that user. We need to make risk-based decisions in real time about where they can go and what they can do. To do that, I need to know enough about that user to understand what risk is. Who is he? What does he work for? When's the last time he was, he was attested to? When's the last time a provisioning update was done in his system? What access does he have? What authorization does he have? What training has he gone through? All that information is required in order for me to make that risk-based decision. So that's where Radiant Logic comes into play. You can sort of see the setup here. If you need data to make decisions, Radiant Logic is the place to go to get that information in exactly the format, the schema, the protocol you want it at the speed of a directory. Because if you're doing zero trust, risk-based continuous authorization, you can't ask the user every five minutes in an application as he moves around to stop, wait, let me go query a couple databases, let me join a couple tables, let me get an answer back and I'll be with you in a minute. Just grab some coffee while I re-authenticate re you. It has to be instantaneous. It has to be at the speed of a directory. That's where Radiant Logic comes into play. So for all of those of you that hung on for me uh, after the top of the hour, and boy, I do talk a lot, don't I? I appreciate your attention. In two weeks, we're going to be touching on additional pieces of the where do I go for the next five-year IT puzzle. And I, I encourage you to join us for that webinar. If you haven't heard Gary Rowe's presentation from two weeks ago, go to our website, look for the webinar uh, from Tech Vision on the future of identity management 2020 to 2025. There is some massively important content in there that you need to get kind of comfortable with your head around because believe me, your CIO, your CISO is going to come back to you with a new buzzword saying we need to do this. And when you know what's coming, you're going to have a much better answer for them at that point. Thank you all very much. Happy end of January, and we'll talk to you again in February. Bye-bye.